Mike Maslanka. I'm the head of the Department of Animal Nutrition here at Smithsonian's National Zoo, and we're in the commissary. In the commissary, our role is to make all the diets for all the animals in the park every day. A balanced diet contributes to our overall health, and a balanced diet contributes to the zoo animals' overall health. Where we may go to the doctor, they may go to the veterinarian. Our mom makes us eat our leafy greens. We make them eat their leafy greens. All of our produce is restaurant grade, and there is quite a variety of it. So that's everything from the regular standby things like apples and carrots and sweet potatoes to seasonal fruits that we might be able to get. We're not talking about seconds, we're not talking about anything that we wouldn't buy at the grocery store ourselves. So if it's not good enough for us to consume, then we don't include it in the diets for the animals in the park. We're currently feeding 2,000 animals, um, so 400 species. Basically, we're responsible for delivering the diets throughout the park all day. Once the diets are loaded onto our vehicles, they end up going out in the park and they're delivered to the individual animal houses. The keepers pick those diets up, take them back into their buildings, and then distribute them on exhibit for the animals to come out and then forage. When we're trying to determine what to feed an animal, we are looking at the animal's natural foraging strategy, um, we're looking at what it consumes in its natural environment, and then we're also looking at how we might be able to best match that in the zoo. When we provide the variety of greens for the gorillas, it is a matter of not only the, the standard leafy greens that you might find at the grocery store, whether that be you know, romaine or iceberg lettuce, whatever the case may be, it's also kale and collard greens and dandelion greens. So when we see those animals foraging in the morning, what we're actually seeing is exhibiting some of their natural behaviors as well as meeting their nutrient needs at the same time. As an example of the role that nutrition plays in animal health, uh, we had received Nikki, the famous spectacle bear, into our collection. Um, and when he came in, he was about 200 pounds overweight. What we did as a nutrition staff was to try to pull together a diet that's very similar to what we would do for humans in order to get that significant amount of weight off of that animal. And over time, with strict adherence to that diet, Nikki began to lose weight and ended up at a condition that we would expect for a spectacle bear of his age and maturity. Nikki is doing great. He has been introduced to Billie Jean, who's a female spectacle bear, and it is sort of the the culmination of the success story and that he not only has lost the weight um, but we're hoping that he becomes a reproductive spectacle bear um, and then he has offspring at the zoo. Once all the deliveries are done everybody ends up coming back to the commissary and working ahead on um, diet preparation on a variety of different fronts so that by the end of the day we have a complete set of diets for the next day. Uh, 365 days a year uh, that happens. Um, animals eat all the time and our main mission is to provide those diets every day of the year.